halo. Halo Bu Merlina, selamat malam Ibu. Bu Merlina selamat datang, terima kasih oh, sudah selamat. hadir. Ya, selamat pagi. <laughs> selamat pagi di sini dan selamat malam di sana. Baik, ya, uh, Bapak Ibu dan rekan-rekan semua, kita menunggu beberapa menit sebelum jam 8. Mari kita nikmati kembali beberapa video sambil menunggu rekan-rekan lain untuk join di pertemuan kita ya. Marlina, just want to say hello and thank you so much. Sama-sama, Bu Maria. Ya. Terima kasih ya. banyak ya, Ibu, kesediaannya. Sama-sama.
pagi Bu Yani Semoga sehat selalu Bapak Ibu semua Selamat pagi dari Lampung Selamat malam Bu Meli Selamat pagi teman-teman Selamat pagi Bu Oktavianti Bu Selamat Irun pagi. ya Kita baru kenal nih Hai I ya. Oh ini Bu Citra ya Bu Ya. Ini ada Bu Dianostika Sari, Bu Maria, yang akan jadi pembicara minggu depan sepertinya. Oh ya. Baik Bapak Ibu, kita akan memulai acara kita pada pagi hari ini. Good morning, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining our Zoom meeting. Before we start our program today, please allow me to share the protocols of video conference. First, please can we adjust your name or ID screen using the format AUD underscore abbreviation of your university underscore your name. Second, During the video conference, we kindly ask all participants to turn off the audio and only turn on the audio when MC or moderator give the suggestion. Third, we would like to recommend all participants to adjust the seat position comfortably and prevent the backlight effect. Fourth, please ensure your network has a stable internet connection for your convenience during the event. Fifth, We recommend all participants to use a headset or earphones for clear and better sound. In addition, we kindly ask all participants to fill in the online attendance and pre-survey through bit.ly slash pre-survey P2P or the link could also be found in the chat room. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are about to start the program. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A very good morning and evening to all of you. I would like to welcome you all to the virtual public lecture, People to People Relationship Program, with the topic, Researching Digital Media in the Critical Spaces, on this beautiful Saturday, October 3rd, 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, a little bit of a view about the program. Having a goal of strengthening higher education in Indonesia, the education and cultural attache of Indonesian Embassy in Washington, DC, USA, and Majelis Rektor Perguruan Tinggi Negeri Indonesia, and also I4 of USA and Canada, initiated a, a collaboration with the big team People to People Relationship Program. This 2020 begins with the virtual public lectures and later will be expanded to activities such as joint courses, joint research, joint student discussions, joint syllabus, and others. The implementation of VPL is divided into several clusters. From a total of 17 clusters, ITS became the coordinator of two fields, namely engineering and architecture, urban planning, and design. Here we are participating in the PPL series of P2P program for architecture, urban planning, and design. Ladies and gentlemen, before we start, please allow me to greet Professor Popi Rufaida, Indonesia's Educational and Cultural Attaché for USA, or the representative. Professor Taifo Mahmud, Managing Director of I4 for the USA and Canada, or the representative, Dr. Andi Ilham Mahmud from the Secretariat of Majelis Rektor Perguruan Tinggi Negeri Indonesia, or the representative, Dr. Merlina Lim, Carleton University, Canada, our speaker today in virtual public lecture, People to People Relationship Program. Hi, Dr. Merlina. Hello, hi. <laughs> It's Selamat good to pagi. have you here. Yeah. Pleasure. So it is already Pleasure. 8 or 9 p.m. there. We are really thankful for your kind effort to be with us today. Yeah. Also, uh, 
Hello to all representatives of USA Canada diaspora. Good to wife is connected successfully. Dr. Octavianti Dwi Wahyurini, our moderator today. Also the PIC for virtual public lecture, people to people program in the field of architecture, urban planning and design. Hello, Dr. Oin. Hello, hello, Mbak Yani. Hello, everyone. Ibu Merli. Hello. Thank you, Ibu. Also, to all lecturers and students as participants of virtual public lecture, People to People program today. In this beautiful day, we are going to have the following agenda. First, the opening of the program, and then followed by the public lecture along with the question and answer sessions, and then closing. Well, ladies and gentlemen, before going to the main event, let us lower our heads and pray for the Almighty God, hoping that today's event will be smooth, beneficial, and fruitful for all of us. Praying begins. Praying ends. Please allow me to remind to all participants to fill in the online attendance and pre-survey through bit.ly slash pre the survey P2P, or the link could also be found in the chat room. Later, all participants will also have to fill in the post survey. For those who fully participate and fill in both surveys, we'll entitle e-certificate. Now, I would like to introduce our moderator today, Dr. Octavianti Dwi Wahyurini, or uh, usually we call her Dr. Oin is an assistant professor in visual communication design department, ITS Surabaya. She graduated from Clemson University, USA this very year and also completed her master's degree at Curtin University of Technology in Australia. She is senior manager of ITS Global Engagement Directorate for promotion and mobility. Without further ado, let's welcome Dr. Oin. Hello, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi Good morning and evening to all honorable guests. So I see so many highly motivated and excited uh, faces in the audience today. A Saturday morning becomes a very productive morning in the weekend and much anticipated with the virtual public lecture people to people relationship program. I'm your today's moderator for a topic researching digital media in the critical spaces with Dr. Melina Lim from Carleton University, Ottawa, Canada. And I would like to read uh, Dr. Melina CV. Dr. Melina Lim, uh, she is a Canada Research Chair in Digital Media and Global Network Society in Carleton University. She's also the member of Royal Society of Canada's New College of Scholars, Artists and Scientists in 2016. She's the director of Align Media Lab and also associate professor of communication and media studies. Uh, she did uh, her PhD in University of Twente, graduate uh, with cum laude in science, technology studies and technology and development. Uh, she did uh, her master in Parhyangan Catholic University in architecture and her bachelor in ITB, Institute of Technology Bandung. Her publication is Roots, Routes, Routes, Routers, Communication and Media of Contemporary Social Movements and Online Collective Action Dynamics of the Crowds in Social Media. So without the further ado, uh, let's hear what Dr. Melina would like to deliver for this beautiful Saturday. Dr. Melina, the time is yours. Hi, uh, selamat pagi, selamat, uh, good morning. Thank you. Thank you, Hatur uh, Dr. Oyen. Uh, so I, first I would like to welcome you all to come to the Zoom seminar, right? The great thing about Zoom is that you don't have to take any object, bad check, bad check. 
right? Just get up and uh, from your bed, probably some of you are online from your bed. So um, welcome. So I'll, actually I wanted to, to deliver this lecture in Indonesian. However, I, I, I started my career as a, in lecturing and I started my first lecture in English. I actually never really gave any lecture in Indonesian, fully in Indonesian. So uh, today what I will do is I will kind of mix. My slideshow will be in English, but uh, I will try my best to also speak Indonesian because I actually, I'm Indonesian. I kalau ngobrol bahasa Indonesia gaul bisa banget. Uh, <laughs> And actually, my first language, my mother tongue is uh, Bahasa Sunda. Kayak orang Sunda di dia, tiasa nyari Sunda. But I cannot give lecture in Sundanese. So, all right. Uh, today, I will share, share my screen and I will just start with my... Uh, well. Can I share my screen? All right. So the title of my uh, lecture today is Researching Digital Media in the Critical Space. Uh, when we had meetings about virtual public lecture, the first wave, the first uh, wave, which is, this is still the first one, right? We were supposed to share about either our discipline, development, our disciplines, uh, something that motivate people about the career in disciplines, which is in architecture, urban planning and design, about possibly stories or uh, knowledge that might inform all of you about uh, the future, the future of discipline, the future of career in the fields. And I was thinking really hard about this because it's very difficult because, you know, as you see, actually my Canada research chair is not in architecture, it's not in urban planning or, or in uh, design. But uh, also I think I was... I don't really know how to really tell a simple story about career or how my research trajectory unfolded. Uh, mute. Okay. So, so, but so, what it is to what I'm, I'm going to show is. Actually, this is what I will do. I'm actually about researching digital media in the critical spaces, which is that's exactly what I've been doing in the last possibly almost 20 years since I was a student. But also, to a certain degree, we'll tell you story about the journey, how, how it has been uh, years of journey from, from being an architecture student and now I'm actually a Canada Research Chair in Digital Media and Global Network Society. And what it means to be in critical spaces for me is actually, it is an interdisciplinary spaces. It is a transdisciplinary sp sp spaces. Also it's a liminal spaces. Liminal is like a space where there are two or more stream meets, right? It's not really a mainstream space. So what, what is my discipline is very difficult to explain to, to people, but through my research, I think you will see how uh, so many things that I gained through my, through the course of my studies, they met, they eventually met some time ago and define my field, define who I am but also define the field that I'm trying to build right now. So Canada Research Chair in, Can in Canada is basically is nationally endowed chair. When we were selected, 
our job was supposed to set to create a center of excellence in research in in the international level and we are supposed to the only person who have this name right so in my case is digital media and global network society uh, is uh, it's quite quite humbling and it's a lot it's huge responsibility but also uh it's rewarding it's very rewarding to do this and i hope I could shed light on uh, sort of like tease out things that come together in in the field, in making this field, but also uh, possibly inform you on some alternative pathways that is different than mainstream in your careers, in your disciplines. So now you pernah lihat ya gambar ini ya. So your expectation is like mungkin kalau umur berapa 15, 16, 17 uh, lulus SMA you kind of like doing UMPTN. What is, I don't think it is UMPTN or what is sekarang SM something as basically testing, right? Uh, and then you, okay, I'll become an architect. And you think it's going to be like finishing architecture studies, get the job, probably starting with junior architect, senior architect, becoming a, a famous architect, right? Or what, owning a, a company. So, or if you go into academia, you think that's going to be like, okay, becoming a, possibly getting a job as a docent and then get scholarship as dua, as tiga, and then you move on and then that's, that's going to be like that. But reality is actually on the other hand, might not be like that, right? I, I'm not sure mine is like that, like Banang Kusut, but uh, definitely different. But it doesn't mean the reality is difficult or you have to go through longer time or it's gonna be suffering, gonna be what what the, the, the picture show is sometimes the reality is just much more complex and it's not linear. Having said that, if I have to redo all over again, I would still not doing it in a mainstream way. Probably I'll do it better probably will take me, uh, probably I would be able to avoid some pitfalls, but but I'm grateful for, for what, what's going on, what uh, has been happening. And, and I think I'll show you is this. So my expectation when I, when I did architectural degree is that eventually someday I would become an architect that's, that is financially independent making good career and and that would be smooth and it was kind of actually when I started it, it was beyond my expectation uh, I very quickly became a, a chief architect when I was just 24 I won some competition and uh, national competition for design so but but then there was something that wasn't kind of like there's dissatisfaction or I think I was I was curious and I felt the job didn't really fit my curiosity and so my journey is more like the red one right like are you think going, going up but no apparently you're going down again you think you're going up again and then you're going down and and then get a job and long story short right coincidentally get get to do PhD change the whole thing and then get get a postdoc that one of the best communication center i don't know why i never know it was unexpected got a tenure track job and then some kind of weird thing happened you were like you thought you would lose everything but you didn't but so in terms of right now it's probably the same. It's met my expectation in terms of financial expectation. Like 
I'm not rich. I never really wanted to be super rich. What I mean, rich is like billionaire or millionaire. But I'm financially secure, right? That's fine. But my reality is actually beyond what I dream because actually I love what I do right now. I'm a, I'm a professor, scholar, writer, teacher, educator, mentor. I love my students. I love my students who have graduated, especially graduate students when they work with me, they become my colleague forever. I love meeting you all here, right? It's like you're making new friends all the time. You go places, people read your stuff sometime. The reward is not in what I publish. The reward is when someone sends you an email that they are inspired or including sometimes it's not academia, an NGO somewhere saying that, hey, I read your stuff and it's very helpful in, in our work. And that's the reward. That's I wouldn't get if I settle with my original plan. So the content when rewarding and joy mostly come not publication, award, grant, but what's human connection that coming from doing research that I think I wanted to do. So I'm very research driven, right? Research driven. And I, it's, it's kind of hard to explain at first, probably like 20 years ago or 10 years ago to, to, to really tease out how I came to this one. But no, I know because I reflect, reflected on this so much. And I also I was asked a lot to, to share how I do my research. How have I been doing this research? Uh, so that's what I'm gonna be taught, telling you. What it means to be living, also researching in this field. Uh, this is just a scheme. So if you use uh, your computer, of course, looking at this, you could actually look at the top mutual shaping of techno technology and society. Societal implication of digital media data and algorithm is my research. My other research is speciality of politics, network and spaces of politics. Politics is not big politics, but politics as an act, uh, orders that govern the order of things, right? Uh, the politic of architecture, cities, excluding, right? Human connection through time and space. Uh, and the other one is alternative knowledge, alternative production of knowledge. And uh, the scheme show you sort of like the trajectory since my PhD. So uh, a kind of research, I started with Indonesia, why Indonesia? Because uh, I am Indonesian. Because I also there had so many questions about certain phenomena in Indonesia, and uh, in eventually I did Southeast Asia. And prior to Arab Spring, like like around three uh, three years before Arab Spring, I started doing. I started to be interested in civic spaces online and offline, urban spaces, and digi di digital spaces in Cairo, Tunis. Uh, I was interested in the relationship of these spaces. And then Arab Spring happened. So I was ahead of people in terms of doing in-depth research. So, so I wasn't one of the opportunists who jam to jump into the research because of that, but I benefited from sort of like my curiosity. And it's almost like I sense that, you know, I, 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 I like to pay attention on small things, small things that seemingly come in, in the pattern, into patterns. I was curious and pursuing it without money, without funding. When eventually we got funding because Arab Spring happened from National Science Foundation, working with computer scientists and it was defining kind of like I became known beyond Southeast Asian study. It was a bonus. I didn't didn't pursue that. That's how eventually uh, 
I became a CRC, calendar research chair, because I think my Middle East and Southeast Asia research define the inter internationalness of my research. And so it's gone go on. I'm on the second term right now of my Canada research chair, CRC, and I'm doing several kind of work. I will, I have, so I'm a second year starting on 2019. That's going to be until 2024. I don't know yet after that what's, uh, what's going to do, right? But I will be busy until at least 2024. My latest one right now is about algorithms. Uh, in the second wave of, we'll talk about algorithm and analysis, so rhythm and algorithms of urban spaces, urban and digital spaces. Uh, that's for later. Uh, I have a lab right now, which is alternative uh, media and global network media lab, which basically engaging publics in knowledge making, but also in helping organ organization and nonprofits and groups, community groups in, in finding their voices, uh, especially marginalized group or marginal, marginalized community in, 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 in empowering their voices. So that's, it's just the map, just the map of my list. So, so this is that, this is that. Uh, from comics PhD, PhD comics. There's a joke going on, you know, that's, this is what you, what you have to do. There is no intellectual freedom per se in academia because yes, when you are on grad school, you said, I'm going to research whatever I want. And then you enter grad school, graduate students, and you eventually have to I'm going to research whatever my professor wants because you want to graduate. And then you become a junior professor, a student professor, because you want to get tenure. And then you, you change, you no longer are idealistic. I'm going to research whatever my tenure committee wants. It takes five or six years, right? To in, in New York, North American settings to get tenure. So I'm tenure several years ago. Uh, I'm not emeritus yet, and certainly not R R A I am rest in peace yet. So I'm in the on that in the cozy chair, but I don't have that beard. I have a little bit of white hair. I'm not that much, so uh, I'm not looking like that, right? I'm not looking that like that tenure professor. Eventually you said, I'm going to research whatever my grant committee want because you want grants, because butuh uang untuk, untuk, untuk melakukan research. And then eventually it's too late to, to do research that you want to do. I'm going to research whatever when you are emeritus, your pension, right? And then when you die, your research is also kind of die, research in peace. Uh, it's a very skeptical view on how to do research. To a certain degree, there is truism in it. But I refuse to believe that. Actually, I, I'm tenure. I don't think I ever think of doing research based on where the money is. If anything, I, I would be embarrassed to do that. But money comes because I'm trying to do what is contemporary and relevant to today's problem. So I have secured grants and actually I have enough grants until 2024 at least or beyond. But then I was never really one of these things throughout my, so if I have to change it, this is me. Well, not me. This is a critical monkeys, right? I, I love to doodle monkey. This is, I love to doodle monkeys for my graduate student. If I criticize them, if I said, you know, well, this paper is kind of boring. You know, you put monkey, so it's kind of, so they nggak sakit hati kalau dikasih uh, doodling monkey, kan? Yeah. So I will explain why. 
what it is. But I think there is something uh, we we abuse the, the the word critical because the thing that you use critical for everything. But what it means to be critical, there are, there are different ways of of uh, interpreting it. But I will do it. I will try to do it my way. Critical for me is first to do research where you think the research is relevant to today's problem. Doesn't have to be big, doesn't have to be gigantic, but it's relevant to what you live in, where you live in, where in the world you want to see yourself. Second, being critical is to have all kind of intellectual intellectual repositories, methods, tools, analytical tools in order to carry out that research. And the third is to actually to be able to say that's eventually falling in love with it. To critically distance yourself, but also being able to be immersed so deeply because you enjoy being in it, because you feel that you could be better, you would become a better researcher, and becoming a better researcher would make you a better human being too, and connect you to a better community, intellectual community in the world. That's, that's what it means to be critical, and continuously reflect on that. And over time, actually, I have become more critical of myself if you compare me now when I was young, right? But also having more fun. And I care less about the judgment. And interestingly, by, by doing so, it's, it's becoming more rewarding. And it's just like, I'm going to do this thing because I think it matters. And if eventually I will get grant, eventually I get cited, highly cited, that's the bonus. Those all things secondary, and they will come because you do research that matters. This is a sort of like very uh, detail. I was asked to do this because I, I, was, I gave a lecture in, in Berlin uh, and they said, don't do don't do presentation about your research subject because we could read it. What we want to hear from you is you as a human being uh, share us about your your journey because you are here. That's that's why we want to hear about it, right? If it is about your research, we could read from your publication. So I did this one. Uh, so. Basically, for me, being a researcher is also living as a researcher because it's part of me. It's like I'm, I cannot be like, hey, I'm a researcher where I'm in the house and uh, on campus and not researcher, right? Because I think there is something about the job has defined me. Of course, I'm, I'm something else too, right? A friend, a wife, and, and other things, and human being, and but uh. But this is also define who I am, part of who I am. So, and so my research has always been like influenced by where I am, where I am, where about, what, where, where I come from. Of course, I come from Indonesia. But also, what happened around me, what happened in the world, what happened in this technological world, and what happened in the intellectual space. The first one is right my whereabout. So I was born in Dayakolot. The uh, yang terkenal kalau banjir grew up there in Bandung. Sempat di Jakarta. Lalu sempat nomad. Lalu uh, Belanda, US mostly, and then now is in Canada. Uh, 
So here is my research. This is what I do right in the Yang Di Dalam Kotak uh, Gray. Dan ketika saya melakukan research, tentunya saya dipengaruhi oleh media, event, events, events yang terjadi di dunia ini, tetapi tidak terjebak kepada preoccupation of Western media coverage. Misalnya, setelah September 11, research di Amerika itu yang terutama yang tentang technology and socio technology itu semuanya bergerak di cyber terrorism. I could have I could have joined biggest largest largest uh, research at my university waktu itu saya di ASU uh, di sekitar 2005 sampai 2000, 2009 ya. Banyak sekali uang di, di cyber terrorism. But I thought, no, I don't want to, to be opportunist. And there are so many people joining in that one. So I do a different thing. I I actually, I argue in my proposal that eventually was funded. Why all of the research pre- pre- preoccupy with cyber terrorism in the Arab world, that was actually carry out by less than 0.1% of the population but didn't care about what the youth or regular people in the Arab world like 99.99% right how about one of four uh women who actually blog and do other things so i was always like looking at something that was not answered When I'm dissatisfied with the when I'm dissatisfied with the state of research, I'm trying to find answer. I think it is is illogical to be carried away by the wave of certain type of research just because it makes news on media, or like they say, like. Uh, so I started doing other things, and it was lonely, right? Because nobody else cared. But then, hey. Come on, I understood better than anybody else who just eventually wake up in 2011 and doing some not so good research because they were opportunists and published too fast. And I carry all of this knowledge. None of this research is independent. Yes, for example, research about research about student movement in Indonesia in 98. That I was, I did in 2003, but I went back in time, right? Very useful in in understanding Laskar Jihad, but also my research on Warnet is useful in understanding everything else too. In in fact, my research in Indonesia, in Jakarta, and Yogyakarta, and Bandung was useful to my for my doing research in Cairo and Tunis to understand where to go, to understand urban spaces on how the network and spaces of, and building uh, and taxi driver and how all of these networks create human connection that enable certain type of collective a- action that, that mosque in Cairo would possibly become one of the civic spheres just like how churches in Hong Kong actually plays a special role in civic movements. That's you gain because you carry knowledge from previous research and sort of like there is sort of like continuum. And this now become kind of rather clear here that I'm really concerned about space, time and materiality. Materiality could be building, could be architecture, things are in the city, but also could be technologies, right? Yes, I'm not in architecture, but that preoccupation with spaces, spatialities, time, temporalities, and materialities actually do come from architecture. And I do pay attention to details and how 
human moves through spaces, whether it's spiritual or, or, or physical, those are skills and knowledge that you gain. So it's less about disciplines, but more about a kind of ways of thinking and skill, analytical skill that you gain through your study and how to take advantage of those skills. When you bring it to a different, different field, right? I bring it to science and technology studies, communication, people think, wow, that's original because they don't get used with someone from architecture move to their field. But I bring something new, which is to my benefit, right? It is kind of weird sometimes, like, kayak aneh gitu, cara berpikirnya. I think Merlina is weird, strange, but exciting. Right? That's my student thinks that I'm weird. Uh, but also they like me, they think like, I think you're amazing, but they're so weird though. Yeah, that's okay. I don't mind, right? Uh, so that's, that's, but also like to not to be trapped in the trend, right? You pay attention to the trend, what's going on in the world, sorry. But also, but not being trapped in it. So I'm doing recently, of course, I'm doing social media, uh, uh, research, but but I'm mindful that my my way of looking at social media is beyond than just not looking just Facebook. Everything is all Facebook, YouTube, or how social media is defined in the in the sort of industrial world tech development. But in my research world is actually I look for example. The connection in 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 the connection between in Bursi movement, for example, in Malaysia, right? How computer, the mosque, uh, balai balai community center, and and the social media might be connected. Copy set, copy houses in Tunis connect to uh, cyber cafe, taxi driver, all of these nodes of urban nodes, urban networks. Uh, they are social media in. Upward, but our their social media, right? Media not in the in the way we call it, like media media in the mainstream definition right now. But our social we have social media prior to social social media platform, and now that we are dealing with everything that is based on mediated by social media platform, it means that those social media platforms sitting on social media world that is larger. I'm less interested in the platform itself. I'm more interested in the liminality, in the junction, in the overlapping spaces. And how does this technology change the way we connect ourselves, how we connect to each other, how we collectivize, how we disempower, how we empower ourselves, how we are fragmented, how we conduct our politics, how we shape our sociopolitical life through this complexity of uh, spaces, new spaces and networks. And I'm also very much paying attention to debates and discourse. I think I've always been trying to intervene discourse that is seemingly too technocentric. Terlalu the obsessi dengan teknologi sehingga sering bersifat ahistoris, terlalu global, melupakan manusianya, melupakan tubuh manusia. So my my techno, my intervention is I intervene this debate. I care about speciality, temporality, materiality, also human centric human bodies, how to position most human bodies here through my studies. So, okay, so that's like my research. Now, what to research, right? How to decide, okay, mau riset apa ya? ya kalau, kalau ke rumah makan padang gampang gitu kan? Udah pastilah uh, ada nasi sama Sayurnya itu ada default gitu kan. Tapi what's what's on the top of it? 
So what to research is not like going to rumah makan padang. Tidak sederhana. Ya, cuma kalau sederhana ya rumah makan padang. Kalau research ya nggak bisa sederhana. So first, do we should cari do research just because I want? Uh, that's okay. Apa apa. Riset to do riset just because you want to do riset that's 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 okay too. If you use your own money, right? But I'm not using my own money. Like I'm using time. It's sort of like I owe I owe university for infrastructure that I use. I owe a bunch of scholarship that I got through my study that was public money, right? In fact, almost like I owe it to people. Therefore, I cannot just do research because I want to. I cannot do research because it's fun and cool. I cannot do certain research just because it is, hey, gonna make me famous. No. I think every time I try, okay, I think this is the research. Because like I said, right, I see something to be explained and there is not much research on that one. So I see the gap. But then I have to, to ask, why do I care? When I, st when I was uh, doing research for my PhD, it was, it was going back in time. So it's historical, it's about 98, it's about, it's about cyber urban spaces and how, how uh, the internet being positioned within urban spaces and how it might help or not, right? Uh, the student movement of 98. That's because I was reading a lot of explanation and I wanted to understand. I think I owe it to the history to to find ways to ex understand. I, I owe it to Indonesian students because all kind of explanation, they were over simply oversimplification of reality. And I was on the street protesting so I thought there was discrepancy, ada, ada gap, ada dari apa yang ditulis oleh dunia barat. And I thought, I'm Indonesian, I would tell the story, our story. But that's not enough, right? And then I have to deal, it's not about me. It's about whose story do I need to tell? Doing research about others, it's mean, it means that to bring to understand phenomenon in a way that it matters for something larger than myself. So uh, eventually I was thinking like, yeah, it's never about me, right? And But it is almost like the research choose me because I was at the position that enabled me to do that kind of research to tell stories that matter. Not that I am able to tell all story, but I think at least to contribute more deeper explanation and we could learn something from it. Learn, learn about the, the complexity of technology. So it's a personal and moral ex because it's not, I didn't choose something that is easy or cozy or like would give me opportunity. I didn't know what it would. In fact, at that moment, I think that not much research in, in the discipline itself or in any discipline. I was at science and technology studies that speak to this phenomenon very hard to, to justify in terms of existing body of knowledge, right? But, but I thought, Okay, I would try. I didn't know I would be able to do it. And then after that, I will I will skip this one. I will go back. Actually, I will go back here. So, and then I always have to say, and then I have to know how to actually do it, right? I think there where I was trying to find methods, what methods that matters, what methods that, I will go to the methodology. Okay. Right. 
And I was thinking like, okay, in order to understand that, I need to use multi-methods. So I kind of like map out all of these methods that I needed to master. Some, some of it from uh, my training, some of it from being an architect, some of it being from, uh, I love computers, so sort of imp computer science, uh, data science, information science. Well, saya anak ITB, so I went to ITB and I love math and, you know, learning about calculus and stuff. So that, those helps. So, uh, and I usually say, okay, it matters. I should care. It's clear. It's not about me. It's about something larger about me. And I think in terms of methods, I'm able to do it, right? And that's, I think, enough to start the research. And the rest is sort of like kind of take care of itself. Uh, and I'm still like that now. I'm not changed. I'm not changed. I'm not pursuing where the money is. I'm not pursuing where the award is. And then you, you get other things happening, just happening because when you think your work matters, you kind of like want, you feel better about yourself. You feel that you are doing something meaningful. You love it more and you work harder and you become better in what you do. And uh, in terms of discipline. Yeah. Excuse me, Dr. Melina. Uh, you still have 15 minutes. Are you still left? have 15 minutes? That's a lot. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, yeah. That's, uh, so I'll, I'll keep going, right? So I still have 15 minutes. So that's what to do. So now go back to where. So how to sort of like thinking. The thing is, once once you, let's say, none, probably some of you will become academia. Some of you don't. But. 10, 15, 20 years from now, if you are in undergrad right now, and you become something, whether it's an architect uh, or um, in th 30 years you become a minister or whatever you do, right? A CEO, a professor, where you came from, like your degrees matter less than what your skills are, what your expertise is. So how does, how do I map my discipline? So like I said, it's actually, so I'm joking. I'm actually undisciplined. Hey, I'm undisciplined movement, right? Because I don't have discipline. It's like, apa? A bundle gitu? Uh, it's double meaning. Okay, so, but this is what I, so I came from architecture. So it means sort of like also we learn about urban studies, urban planning, a little bit, landscape, all. And then I have training in, or my S2 in philosophy and theory of architecture. So those things actually not as a field, they don't contribute or not don't define what I'm doing right now. But as a sort of like giving me foundation, a sort of a set of skill they actually, they are influencing me. I'm doing, so this is like the ethno-historical social network analysis, computational ma mapping, geospatial analysis, content and discourse analysis, and socio-spatial socio analysis. These are all analytical tools that I use. The digital media is actually just a subject, yeah? A subject of my research. It's not necessarily my discipline. I could do other thing. I'm doing smart city right now, for example, right? Data and human bodies and, and cities, uh, urban setting. So they could be other thing. But what, if you take out all of the disciplines, what are left that matters is actually analytical tools, a set of comprehensive analytical tools that you could apply in studying a lot of things to understand the complex complexity, complex problem. It could be about design, could be about architecture, could be about our sociology, sociological implication of technology, right? 
But I borrow from my training because my training is in science and technology studies. I borrow from sociology, anthropology. And because I'm doing Southeast Asian studies, it means I'm also influenced by area studies. I'm now in the Department of Communication. I'm influenced by critical communication media studies. And I borrow some, st I'm, I'm sitting on the, in the board right now, director of, one of the directors of Institute for Data Science. I'm influenced by that too, as the two. But I think what the disciplines don't make who you are or the degrees don't, but it give you a set of tools that are useful. And I think it doesn't matter. Uh, the more, the merrier. And you could, you don't have to use all, but you could choose. It's like, it's like, pakai pisau yang mana ya? Pakai pisau yang ini untuk chopping. Pakai pisau yang ini untuk motong-motong uh, daun bawang sama nincang daging kan beda. Ya kan? Research is like that. I mean, it's like cooking. You have to have a proper gear and know how to use door gears, how to use door uh, knives to actually create uh, some kind of uh, good result. Kalau di akademi mungkin akan bertanya, tapi so what, so where should I publish? Mungkin ada, uh, I think if you are docent, there is a, um, there is a, uh, Tuntutan ya untuk publish di tempat tertentu. This is where I publish. I, I publish in different different areas. But for me, you could publish anywhere. If you have to publish, if you are in architecture departments, you have, have to publish in architecture. I think what matters is not where, but with what shall I, whom, what, and how to communicate. That matter more than where to publish. So this is just sort of like a more uh, vivid mapping of the, the methods. If we just stay away, not being preoccupied by the walls of disciplines, it's okay. I mean, of course, it's great. Being disciplinary is actually great, right? but not being trapped in it, but rather mastering a set of methods and skill analytical tools that are useful for ourselves. I think actually we would become better researcher. This is what a kind of tools that I have. Uh, and yeah, I'm actually a mixologist, like mixing things. I'm a thinker, but also I'm a thinker. I'm tinkering. Why? Because the problems, today societal problems, any research problem necessitate complex methods. Therefore, I always need more than one. Do I use all of this? Not to altogether, but I mix and match, right? I will actually end. And I also do uh, uh, small data, but I will not actually go there, but I will end with, go back to my monkey. So I think it's important to, to be truly critical throughout. And uh, is if you could stay critical and you stay true to research that you think matters. And in the meantime, through your degrees and your studies, or let's say, if you don't want to become researcher, you just stay true to kind of idealism, right? What you do should matter for you, for the small world around you, and relevance to the world. If that's actually, that's actually enough to carry through. Because I think if we are preoccupied by a kind of like map mainstream kind of like expectation of what you want to do in 10 or 15 years, those things could be changed. 
and what to do if things are changed, right? No, uh, I'm not saying that if you are true to doing what matters in terms of sort of like knowledge seeking and uh, stay relevant to the world, you will be successful. I'm not saying that, but at least you could say to yourself, that's, that's within, within your control. Because I think to keep doing best, whether you are in your discipline as an architect, architecture students, architect as a, as a sort of like risk in the research field or urban planning or design, it doesn't matter. But I think to be in control of all items that you could control, your knowledge, your idealism and your which is your curiosity which drives you and a set, a set of tools whether it's methods analytical tools or skills and keep on enriching that part at least if everything else falling apart around you you would still stay solid so i'm gonna uh, stop there and apparently I use more English than Indonesian, and I'm sorry, I, I, I thought I would campur tapi susah untuk exchange to, to language. So, terima kasih banyak. Uh, okay. Thank you so much for listening, and hatur nuhun, matur nuhun. Thank you. Um, please, everyone, give applause to, free or virtual applause to uh, Dr. Melina. Thank you. Very. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So is there no question section? I'm sorry. Excuse me. Is there no question section? Oh sure. So now, uh, just we um have finished uh the uh presentation from Dr. Melina, and now I will be giving to all the audiences to ask questions to Dr. Melina. So you can start by raising hand in, um, by uh, what, clicking the raising hand button or just simply uh, writing your uh, question in this chat box and then I will be asking you to deliver it uh, directly to Dr. Melina. Okay. I'm sorry. I was wondering how to raise your hand in this. Um, so within your ID, there's a, a thing. Uh, yeah. Yes, there's there's a menu there. Or do you do you want to ask a question now? <laughs> I do, but I do. Okay. Yes. Yes. Sure. You can go on. Uh. All right. So my question is like. You see, when you practice illustration, you require practice. You require practice to drawing every day. So you mentioned critical thinking, and is there any way to practice your critical thinking every day? Like, why the, what does that practice entails? Okay, thank you, Dintan. Okay, okay Bu Merlina, I think the question is how to practice your critical thinking. Uh, tadi siapa namanya? Diman? Uh, Dintan, Bu. Dintan, Dintan. Uh, Dintan, terima kasih uh, untuk hmm. pertanyaannya. That's a, that's a big question. <laughs> that's a really big question. An important one. So, uh, I think to be critical is, is it's not really to be in doubt all the time. But I think to not take any statement whether what you read what you hear and what your own thinking right karena kita pikir apa yang kita thinking mungkin coming from ourselves but it's not because we are influenced by our environment as in on face value it's not like you doubt yourself all the time but i think to always think that 
there is no truth. Oh, I'm, I'm talking about in the knowledge system. But there is only interpretation of truth. This is very Foucauldian. And so, and I'm always thinking like that. Even when you think it's seemingly like truth, you have to think that it's always truth is relative in terms of scientific knowledge. So to, to, to actually train yourself for critical thinking, to imagine there is alternative views if you look at it differently. Kalau, kalau, uh, kalau dintan mahasiswa arsitek, arsitek atau desain, pasti belajar perspektif, kan? Uh, so, being critical is also meaning in a very concrete way, is to, to try to look from different perspective and see, right? Uh, and that's with, with almost everything. At first, it's hard to, to imagine. There is alternative explanation of something. Why certain thing look blue? Is it really blue? If you look at it from a different angle, could it be other color, right? And that's a simple sort of like questions. And over time, you sort of like you get into this mode that you are able to imagine that alternative explanation, alternative concept, or alternative ways of thinking so uh, and that's actually fun so it doesn't have to be uh, it's difficult but it's fun uh, to do so you could try with something simple like looking at certain factual statement in social media misalnya, and try to think is there any other explanation alternative explanation and and doing it with friends right Doing it with your friends, your other people in the group, uh, being involved in a kind of conversation, uh, joking around. Uh, this is this is a thing that I ask my graduate student. Why do Chris, chicken cross the road, road, right? And I would say, uh, why do chicken cross the road in COVID time? You know, and then they would come up with a lot of questions. But I said, has to be. And I give them challenge. What do what do what do chicken what do chicken why did chicken cross the road according to the Corbusier, for example, or according to Derrida? And they started to think. And I think having fun with different way of thinking and different way of explaining something uh, is actually a, is a, a form of exercise. I hope that it helps. Okay, thank you, Dr. Melina. Uh, and then we will move to the next question. So it's from Celine. Uh, Celine, are you here? Would you like to ask your questions directly to Bu Merlina? Oh, yes, if I may, thank you, Bu Oyin. Sure. Um, sure. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for telling us your beautiful story, uh, Ms. Lim. Um, I think um, your story uh, is much inspiring me. Um, here's my question. I actually have two questions regarding your journey. So the first one is, um, I'm, I'm currently in my final year in university, and I'm always told that I have to make a roadmap for my future, for my research career in the future. And looking at how your works, your researchers were uh, influenced mostly on the event that is happening on that certain period of time, I was wondering whether you make a roadmap as well when you uh, before you begin all of this journey. That is uh, my first question. And my second question is, um, I saw that um, you jump into a, a politics, you jump into um, um, writing about politics and how women empowerment in um, in a lot of places. Um, and but but your study were about um, architecture. How, what step did you, did you take to jump into that, um, into that, I mean, uh, quote unquote disciplines? Um, what step did you take? Did you like um, join, um, did you, did you like uh, join something or, um, or did you help by, uh, did you being helped by anything? Or what, what, what step did you take to jump into yeah, that? Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. 
Thank you, Celine. And good luck with fourth year, being on fourth year. Exciting, all right? Uh, so, a roadmap. I mean, of course, right? Just like everybody else, I try to imagine what my future would be, but it's never really, it's never really what unravel, it's never really what you actually imagine. I think in my case, it's kind of better. It's more interesting what happened. So, uh, no, I would say no. I My roadmap wasn't like what I show you. It's actually beyond my expectation. But in terms of, in term of uh, short term, shorter term, for example, finishing, let's say if you start to embark on the next step, it is useful. It's useful to build a roadmap and being critical of your own roadmap, right? First, this is really what I want to do. Is it in line with my position, what I want to see my, myself in the world? And I'm like that, I'm doodling. I'm doodling all the time. I'm doodling, I love to sketch, right? I'm actually, some of my research uh, entailing sketching, sketching on place, uh, uh, doodling, uh, like sketching and painting is this other thing that I do, but it's not formally, but so I'm doing that kind of exercise because I think mapping is a very powerful way to be critical, to imagine your future trajectory, but also to be reflexive, right? Because you suddenly see, let's so have distance. You have a distance between you and probably your future. And I assure you, you will not follow that roadmap. Nobody does, right? But, uh, and it's okay. And in my case, it's better. My, 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 my journey is better than my, what I could imagine. So it's, as an exercise, it's useful, but not to be preoccupied by every single thing. I think to also, to, to be flexible. On one hand, have a roadmap. On the other hand, to accept that your plan may be changed. And I'm a bit of like kind of following the flow kind of person because especially when I was younger, right? I, when I did my, when I went to the Netherlands, I was in my 20s uh, doing PhD. That was exciting. It was like, I didn't know what it was. What is science and technology studies? Well, let's try. Probably I would be good at it, right? Sort of like part of me was scared because it didn't match my map. My map, my map was going for another architecture degree, actually. I was accepted in one of the best universities, but the scholarship was, wasn't was enough, like 50%. So I went for something that is full. So uh, to have this sort of space in between, that's safe space that enable flexibilities that also not kind of compress you in sort of like a fixed scenarios, I think is good as well. A second one, uh, how did I move to architecture? I, I love I love designing. I don't hate architecture. I love being an architect. If architect being an architect was is like what is defined, which is designing. But I think I wanted to quit mostly because I work at a corporation, big company, and didn't have any freedom at all. Right? It was just tukang gambar. And I was, I was, I think, very uh, disappointed by the practices of many housing developers. Uh, I live in, it, it was a very moral sort of like decision. Saya tinggal di Dayakolot, banjir melulu. Dan itu ada hubungannya dengan uh, apa uh, daerah hijau yang, yang menipis gitu kan. I was working in, in housing developer in Bandung Utara and I knew very well because I was already a architect, chief architect, uh, how a lot of violation 
my own company where I work that contributed to a lot of environmental damages and I felt hopeless. So in my way, it's kind of searching for what it means to be me, to be doing something meaningful in the world. I, I was like trying to, I was still in architecture, but trying to think of other things of looking at my roles. It wasn't, I'm, I'm not a political scientist. I don't know politics actually. Politics is like more like an order and I still look at the materiality. So it's not like it's not like I'm doing political science kind of research. No, politics is just because I'm interested in power. I'm interested in space, power, and time. Right. Uh, therefore, my my research is useful for politics. So the whole politics political thing is eventually leading me to because I'm I care about power, human connection, human relationship in space. Therefore, po politics come into the middle. Therefore, my work somehow is acceptable in political science. But I never intended to study politics. It's sort of like I had to include politics in my research by virtue of what I care about. So it's, it came later uh, and still, that's kind of like moved me to the more social science, right? But I'm I'm still not, and I will never become political science, and not really interested. Uh, so in a way, it's just make me more disciplinary, probably yes. But it was ac accidental. In it was like what I care about when I ask about what I care about and what I know what I could do, eventually the question of power and politics come into, come into the picture. So it was kind of accidental and I'm not okay with that, so. Thank you so much, Ms. Lim. Um, okay. Ms. Maybe can I like um, ask one very last question um, regarding your answer? Okay. Um, from based on your findings, how, um, in a nutshell, how do politics influence space? In a nutshell, there is no easy answer, right? Um, but basically, I think what. Uh, now, in the in the traditional sense, I think we we think that space and place are neutral, uh, but it's not. So, space and space production. And I'm very Lefebvrean. So, so if you are from, you know, read Lefebvre, uh, human geography probably, or urban planning probably read this. How space is product produce is political. Is political because and how space is used is political because is space is always produced by a set of actors that have to negotiate with power. So pol political here is not actually politics like big politics like not pemerintahan. No, politic political here in term of it has certain certain kind of pre the pre the position on kind of what kind of socio cultural activities that may take place there, right? Kayak misalnya kalau kita tidak sediakan tempat untuk uh, homeless bahwa mereka akhirnya homeless itu akan berada di jalanan dan kemudian akan dianggap sebagai uh, criminal yang mengganggu pejalan kaki misalnya. But this is a simple, right? So the act of not providing space itself is a political because it's a moral choice. That's 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 a, that's what I so the if you have to see the production of space as an, a political act and to intervene in the in the production of space is also very important 
in determining sort of everyday kind of politics. So I'm talking more and more about everyday kind of politics, not not politics, national scale, bill president, etc. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Miss Lim. Thank you so much, Miss Lim and Bu Oin. Back to you, Bu Oin. Okay. Thank you, Shalin. I hope thank that. Thank you, Shalin. Yeah, I hope that answered your curiosity. So um, now I will be moving to. Um, hold on a second. Oops. Uh, okay. So from Unsia uh, Laina Sari, would you like to ask your question directly to Dr. Melina? I think it's very rare opportunity for us to ask her uh, questions directly. Ibu Laina Sari, is it? Uh, are you still here? Yes, I'm. I'm still here. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you can deliver your questions now. Okay, so thank you very much for the opportunity. So it's uh, it's very nice to see Dr. Marilyn. So nice I'm to meet you. <clears throat> so I'm from Banda Aceh, from Aceh. So uh, like I wrote in the chat room that uh, it is quite nice to do something that we like, such, uh, such as uh, doing research like you did and like you have done and you do it right now. And I... Uh, uh, do like it as well. However, and this time I was uh, I'm given a responsibility for uh, as a, the leader in a study program in architecture in UNSIA. So it is quite tiring because a lot of uh, works that we have to do, uh, such as the study program accreditation, which consume a lot of time. Uh, I can say that I don't like to to do it. However, I have to do it. And it uh, take my time. Actually, I can do uh, research, but in this time, I have to be focused on this. So how to man manage this situation? Uh, who knows that you have uh, maybe have suffered such uh, problems too. So maybe you can give any solution. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Bulaina. That's a very great question so Thank you. to Merlina, because I think I have that question as well. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we all like. Unfortunately, right? Life uh, is not. It's not. We don't. We don't always do what we want to do. Uh, that's how it is. Yeah, of course. Uh, I do things that I don't like to. Right? Is is part of sort of like. It it parts what we do when we are working in the institution. Unfortunately, it's not effective, right? But we have to do things that we don't like. But uh, and I, I used to, I used to say this thing. I I don't like manage people. You know, I don't like doing administration because there seems to be a waste of time. I used to do. I used to say that. But I think as I get older, uh, I I realize that there is a virtue in doing that you something that you might not know, enjoy there's a virtue of doing things for others right and that's uh, rewarding too so it doesn't really it sounds cliche probably my answer and probably i'm being very unuseful here so i apologize in advance i because honestly i don't really know i don't have any clear answer but i think what i do is that uh, I'm being very selective in terms of personalizing administrative job. Like it's almost emotionless, right? Like because I think sometimes you have to do this little thing and keep in mind that you just do it and probably less emotional about it. Uh, it's not about liking, it's not about loving, but being good at it is, is useful. Being good at doing a lot of things actually contribute to the skill too. Like, um, I, I, as a kind of the research chair, it also has a lot of administrative thing, doing a lot of report. I have to have, I have people, right? I have a lab to run and then managing grant in Canadian setting. Canada, Canadian is it's quite paperwork based, a lot of 
hundreds of pages. And I don't like doing it, but uh, the skill, I, as I try to think positively when I hate it, <laughs> when I hate doing this thing, oh, I don't like doing this thing. I try to try to find ways and to see how the, the, the function of this, okay. Because of this paperwork and managing uh, paperwork and database and people, that's actually contribute. I kind of try to map what kind of skill that I get, I'm getting better at. And over time, right? Because I'm getting better in managing people and writing report. I'm become faster, faster, become more selective. No, no, not to linger. Apa sih? Enggak. I don't know what is in Indonesia. Not to linger on certain thing. Karena stuck kan? I don't know what is it in Indonesia, but uh, try not to linger on things that I don't like. Just do it. And then more spend more time on so the big thing you don't like but within this job that we don't like that probably there are things that we like so just sort of like switch your mind to enjoy to to think of in the big picture the things that we like from this job for other things you just do it and the faster you do it the better right um but it is, a, I have to say, it is a classic problem for researcher. In fact, the better researcher you are in, in, in here, right, in Canadian setting, is sort of like the more paperwork and administrative work that you have to do. And eventually, once you become sort of more senior, you have to take administrative job as well. Uh, we all having that, and there is no easy, easy answer to that. I think to find values in certain aspect that we do that may be transferable to research or I always find it rewarding when there is human connection when I, when I have value for others through no matter how boring the work is that might be helpful but if my answer doesn't help I apologize thank you thank you uh, yeah, thank you. It helps. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. You're very welcome. And now we move to the next uh, question uh, from IPB. Nurul yes. Iswari. Yes. yes. Can you hear yes. my voice? Yes, it's very okay. clear. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Miss Dwi, and hello, Dr. Lim. Uh, hello. Sorry, uh, I have to disable my video, but. Uh, here's my question. Um, uh, this is what I'm concerned about as we are facing COVID-19 pandemic right now. Do you think it will be more effective for us to build our critical thinking through digital media? Because we almost connected to the internet for 24 hours, but the problem is how can we manage from misleading information and other disruption? Thank you so much. Right. Right, this is the, uh, thank you for the questions. So, uh, there, this, this, this question has is a two, two prong questions. Is, in a sense, is one is a practical one. How we might want to, to uh, avoid this information. Another one, I think the question also speak to the fact that uh, we are in the new, we are in a different situation, right? And then, and this is, this is probably gonna be here for a while. And what we are doing right now have impact on our future and the future of education, the future of research and the future of things that matter to us. So on one hand, I think, yes, I agree that there's a lot of disinformation. We cannot stop alone. Alone, we cannot stop the flow of this information because it's huge, right? Before COVID, the, the, the social, social media especially uh, was a fertile ground for this information. Mau pil press, mau pil group, mau uh, all kind of events right in, in the US as well, US election or any disaster, right? 
um, and COVID, the fact that COVID takes place, it's it's a it's a there is no there's ways to probably combat in a more institutional manner, right? Like there there are a lot of uh, attempts to do it, but I think if you could join any attempt, any initiative to combat, that's good. If university could form any network to combat disinformation within university, that's good. But I think what we could do is basically, this is what I'm saying to, to uh, in other seminars, I said, it's, this is true, especially for Indonesia. This information become dominant when there is no strong official channel, strong flow of accurate information. Yeah. Yes. I think because people's trying to find to find to find information. If accurate information is not very strong, it doesn't have any very strong flows, and it's hard to find. In this information become more dominant. But if you have strong channel of information, right? That is routine, there is uh, frequent, but also have steady flows, people actually will be less tempted to look at this information. So therefore, I think to participate in this flow of information, accurate information, especially from institutional point of view. So some of you are, are pejabat or, or docent. To have this, to, to, to strengthen the flow of accurate information is actually to a certain degree, it's, it fights. And it's actually good for critical thinking too, right? It's good for critical thinking to another way to look at it, to look beyond COVID. Because I think if we take advantage of COVID situation, the fact that we are now, this is this is fantastic, right? Ibu Maria, kudos to Ibu Maria to to have this. Because I've been giving, I gave lecture before, but but this is like the, the virtual public lecture that we have been doing right now during the COVID is the best, I think, in terms of organization. And it's probably being during the COVID that we get used to to doing Zoom, right? Make us better in terms of using technology for good, for common good as well. This should stay, right? And how to bring it to classroom later, a kind of conversation that doesn't, doesn't like become temporal and transient, I think is very important. And to carry a kind of experience during the COVID, in terms of critical thinking, in terms of interconnection between universities, is how many universities? 100, I don't know, I think Ibu, Ibu Maria said it was over 100, right? Over 120s and having this classroom this big, having the collaboration between time zone. Actually for me, it's rewarding to be able to share uh, to how to maintain this and to fight, to strengthen the critical thinking and the thirst for scientific knowledge in itself will help us in fighting this information in the future. It's a long-term game, right? But I think it is, will be useful. It will be, I hope it's gonna be carried on to the future and beyond just Zoom webinar uh, that we, we are doing during the COVID. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. So um, we have, uh, I hope that we still have a, a more time for two other questions. So this is the next one. And then I will have the final one uh, from Nisrina Iqbar, Universitas Negeri Semarang. Uh, Nisrina Iqbar, Ibu Nisrina Iqbar, are you here? Would you like to uh, ask uh, the question directly? Yes, please. Okay. Wow. Are you a student? Yeah, I'm a student. 
Oh, I'm so excited. Yes, please uh, deliver your question now. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, at first, I think I have to introduce myself because it's um, kind of related to the questions I'm about to ask. So I'm an architecture student and judging from the environment which I am in, it seems like um, my friends are too tired to do some kind of research or being critical or to be care about the situation around us because um, maybe Dr. Lim knows about it because you were an architecture student, right? Like we have a lot of assignments and you know, we tend to choose during our assignments than being care about certain issues. And I really want to know how do you progress towards, how do you think right now? How do you be a researcher and being critical and all? Um, I think that's all. Uh, thank you. I hope you can understand what I'm asking. Yeah. Hey, thank you. Uh, Nisrina, is that Nisrina, right? Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank, thank you for thank you for the question. I think that's a great question, and it's hard. It's hard to be young, and busy, and tired uh, in architecture the pro programs. I think used to joke that you know uh, your life is basically in the studio, right? Like like uh, doing work. Like I think design design student and architecture student had no time for other things, right? Actually, uh, I had a very different, different kind of like, I was very active in other things uh, beyond studio. Uh, I understand it's, it's tiring to be architecture students uh, or to be students probably in general. It's hard to, to do other things, to care about other things. And 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 we think caring about other things but our own grades is a nuisance or like what hijacking yourself from the goal of of studying right distracting but in my experience that's not true i i, I graduated quite fast almost in every every uh, degree, I think because I did other thing. Other thing that is seemingly mundane sometimes and fun, but it was good for critical thinking. It could be, uh, it doesn't matter what you do, but I think to be surrounded by like-minded people, by friends and or hanging out with uh, getting closer to Dawson or uh, whomever, right? That's kind of like giving you opportunities to bounce, to think differently. Not necessarily have to talk about theories or concept. No, just like I, I was, I was very, very lucky. I was in the choir. I love to sing. I was in the band. I always in the singing or music kind of uh, club kind of throughout my study. I still do music now. Uh, because I actually, through music, I met people who think differently. And they sometimes talk about social phenomenons, right? You talk about space, building story, history, and it's good to, to hang out people who think differently. And, and you could meet people throughout, to whatever, go to civic spaces, having fun because having a break from study, doing something else, even though it is small probably, is actually good, refreshing. But even then, if you cannot do that, among, within the, within the environment itself, I think to use sort of like spaces in between. This is continuum being architecture student, but we don't have to be preoccupied by two gas and project all the time to have temporal break. 
that's actually repressing, right? And I'm I'm like that in my research too. I think doing administrative work is like that too, right? Because otherwise, it's like you become the slave of what you do, not the master, right? So you break this big chunk then doing something that's where we have fun and meaningful and then hopefully meaningful conversation. I, I take a walk a lot. Uh, and I have friends to walk with me where we just like having fun, laughing so hard, but also sometimes engage in critical thinking. And I don't have to be everybody's friend. I choose my friends. I think having that kind of space, small space, doesn't have to be all the time. Uh, is is useful, but right now probably doing it online, right? Find places where you you could be you could engage in critical thinking about anything. Doesn't have to be about architecture. Doesn't have to be about theory. It could be about critical thinking about history of music. Critical thinking about interpretation of Beatles. Critical thinking about Van Gogh, right? So to have fun. Because when you're young, I think it's important to have fun. And you are old, it's still important to have fun too. And I think to have fun while while doing critical thinking is enjoyable. It changed the way you look at the world. The world is more colorful, it's more interesting, more challenging things, and less tiring, hopefully. Do I make sense at all? <laughs> Okay, and this Rina, yes. you, still, you still have more years to go, inshallah. So I think uh, we will be going to the very last question, maybe uh, from Ibu Silvia Agustina. Please, a uh, very quick book, uh, uh, because we only have, I think, eight minutes left. Miss Rina, thank you for asking the question. Thank you so uh, from much. Uncia, uh, from Uncia, Ibu Silvia Agustina. Thank you. Are you here? Yes. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih uh, panitia dan semua. Salam. Uh, hi to Ibu Manina. Very nice to have this opportunity to actually uh, virtually communicate. So actually, I have a lot of questions, but I think I'm going to maybe try one, can one. Um, so I read your posting. I think it's called. Who am I not to be brilliant? I think uh, that was the title. Oh, wow, that was from a long time ago. <laughs> so, and then um, I think I admire your guts. I think not, uh, not everyone has uh, such guts. So my questions is uh, probably not directly related, but I've been wondering, uh, uh, every time I read uh, inspiring stories, I'm wondering about the support system that uh, the person ha uh, has. Uh, so if you, uh, do, do you care about having support system, particularly in pursuing your dream in academic exploration and uh, more specifically in uh, research exploration? Uh, if you care about one, uh, what are the support system and do you have a main one and how have you been uh, building uh, maintaining, developing your support system. Okay. And so, uh, I wonder uh -huh. if, uh, like, do you think a uh, woman, particularly in like, uh, say Indonesian context, do you need, uh, do you think uh, we need to be aware, like fully aware of uh, uh, building the support system? I heard my friend uh, talk about how uh, negotiating between what to do and what they love to do. Uh, these are very common thing for Indonesian uh, uh, academia. So I think I'll narrow on this uh, some question and hopefully maybe later in the future I can have more kesempatan untuk yeah, bincang. kesempatan in person. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't guess someone read that old blog post. I forgot that was from 2006, I think. Mm. I need to remind you about the content. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. I remember because I wrote that one. Thank you. So 
Uh, so I I think uh, I know this is not your question, but that who who am I not to be brilliant uh, is uh, is actually related to the way I will answer your questions because I think this is related to the first the, the third slide that I show like when I map my career path. I thought I was just, you know, because my family thought, my family come from working class. My uh, ibu bapa saya uh, lulusan SMP. And uh, I was the first who went for S2. I was the first to went to S3. My parents still don't understand what I'm, my research is about. They don't speak English. They still live in Dayakolot. So I don't have that research culture. And I thought I would settle with what is best for people like us, right? Making enough money to support my family and that would be okay. And, uh, but then later on I was thinking, 